what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so most of this video is going to be me discussing i know what you did last summer three more specifically related to julie james role in the upcoming i know what you did last summer three yes i know there's a third movie already but i'm gonna keep calling this three because I, I it seems to be bugging some people who watch my video so i'm just gonna keep calling this three because i believe this is the true third movie despite it being the fourth but our discussion will be based on Leah McKendrick's comments with Perry from Collider today. This is important because it pertains to a tweet Cinestealth put out not too long ago where it previously tweeted that the script for the film isn't ready, which could of course be ready by now. But the pitch that was very impressive to the Sony execs when the film got announced back in 2023 of last year, last February, the pitch apparently cannot work without Julie, according to Cinestealth. I proposed the question of why in my video, and of course, some not thinking outside the box immediately jumped to the stereotypical, the obvious, oh, because she was the OG final girl. That's a given. But what about this pitch is making Julie a necessity besides just checking the box of we got the OG final girl back? Well, now we have an idea, it seems. Lay went into her being protective of this IP during these comments with Perry. She talked about the director, Jen, and then she switched into discussing some plot details. So I'm going to talk about all of that right now. She says, so I kind of said I'm really burnt out on the studio big IP. They had killed my Grease prequel at Paramount. And I was like, I can't build from the ground up over many years for an IP that I don't have ownership of at all. And then my team called me and they're like, so we know you said you didn't want to do any of that anymore, but they are thinking of bringing back, I know what you did last summer. And I was like, maybe one more. The reason I was able to go in is because it was a Sony film. I have a relationship with Sony and the producers I also had a relationship with. And I found out it was Jen that was going to be directing it. And more than anything, I thought, because my love is, is so deep for I Know What You Did Last Summer, I have to protect it. I must protect it. I can't let this be like cheesy and a cash grab. Not that anybody was going to make it that, but you would get it, Perry. When it's like they're rebooting something you love so deeply from your childhood, you're like, I know how we can do this and not make it cheesy and it can stay true to the mythology and we can bring back the OGs and it can be a culmination. You have all these ideas. So I met with Jen. Jen is cool. Jen is so smart. Jen is just like down to try some edgy, cool ass shit. And I was like, I'm going to give this my best shot. And I pitched. All they told me was they were like, we need to know the accident, the events that kick it off and know who the killer is, because they knew that if I had to do a whole fleshed out process of pitching, I was probably just not going to do it because my heart had been so broken by the reboot game. But when they told me that I was like, I know what I'm going to do. And no spoilers, but I will say that I think if you're an OG fan like me and you, I think you're going to be happy. I think you're going to get it. At its core, now this is her getting into the plot details and how Julie seems to be very relevant and a necessity to this pitch. At its core, I think it really reckons with some big ideas about hero and villain, right and wrong, how your skeletons come back to haunt you. And in the age of the internet and the age where fame is such a revered concept, the creation of TikTok and social media. Who is Julie James in a world where there are no secrets anymore? I already feel like I'm saying too much, but I think at its core, if you watch the original, I don't know if you watched it recently. I obviously watched it 8 million times. I'm working on it, but it's fun. It's just a popcorn wild ride. It's campy at times. Jennifer Love Hewitt is so hot. Freddie Prince Jr. is so hot. Sarah Michelle Gellar, Ryan Felipe, they're so gorgeous. It's like beautiful people behaving badly, you just can't get enough of it. There's a lot of that in this film. So the comments there, obviously, about social media are what's making this interesting. And then also how she says, who is Julie James in a world where there are no secrets anymore? So I'm going, what is going to happen with Julie? That's what I want to discuss. Are we going to see a story in which what happened with, with Ben Willis is going to be some type of legend in the town some type of event that has now grown into a viral sensation because of Gen Z. Julie, who never wanted to be famous for such an, such an event, has acquired a, a lot of fame. And then there's also maybe some attention on Julie that she, again, didn't want. And now it's not going to be something for Ben Willis, obviously, because he's dead. But she does something brand new. And then that comes back to bite her because now somebody else is gonna don the fisherman costume to stalk her, 
and go after her the same way Ben Willis did in those first two films. That's what I was leaning on. That's the only plausible scenario I can see playing out now. Julie has acquired some sort of attention in the public eye, some sort of fame because of what happened all those years ago with her friends. Because in that town, whoever the new kids are and the current climate that we live in, they've turned it into some sort of viral sensation which has led to julie getting a lot of attention in the public eye she has no privacy and there's some drastic event that occurs that sparks a new killer to arrive and maybe they themselves are connected to the ben willis incident i don't know or maybe something about the ben willis incident has impacted their life and now this new event that julie finds herself at the center of maybe with her kids too is also going to be something related to their motives that's what i was thinking of as the plausible outcome but the mention of social media to me does sound like they are borrowing some ideas from what we didn't get in the urban legend reboot that scream gems is going to do we'll just have to wait and see i just thought it was very interesting for them to mention social media and tiktok and who is julie james in a world where there are no secrets anymore i would imagine again that we're just going to be exploring new secrets that julie has some new event and that's what's going to spawn it because you can't do ben willis anymore since he's dead what do you guys think that new event will be do you think i'm on the right track what do you think is going to go down with julie james in i know what you did last summer three and why she will be so important there's some sort of event that has to kick it off as they highlighted in their comments but what is it I would guess going off of these mentions of social media that it again will pertain to some sort of tragic incident that Julie finds herself at the center of that is a reminiscent reminder or very reminiscent of what happened with her and her friends all those years ago and maybe her kids are involved now and the person that is angry about this just dons the fisherman costume to taunt Julie as a reminder of you've already done this before and this is a reminder to you of who came after you in the past and I just want to really traumatize you now by reminding you of you've already been in a scenario like this that's the only reason I can see the fisherman costume reappearing granted I wouldn't necessarily be too be too upset if they ditched it but I could see the killer donning the costume just to fuck with Julie or even better what if like i was referencing earlier in the video the costume itself the fisherman is very popular in that north carolina town now it's just grown into this popular thing people wear it all the time around halloween uh people prank play pranks on each other wearing the costume it's just this viral sensation and that's the justification as to why the costume is still being used in the story that's this that's the easiest way to do it if you're going to bring in social media the the costume itself is very popular in the town because of what happened all those years ago with julie and her friends and you actually are drawing a bit of inspiration from scream and the stab franchise and how that popularized the ghost face costume so i like that let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.